Hi, my name is Miguel A. Nunez Jr. and I read a Human Mail magazine. I'm from North Carolina, a little town called Wilson, North Carolina. Nothing ever come out of Wilson but tobacco. And every day of my life, they used to call me Hollywood Nuke, short for Nunez. Because all I ever talked about was going to Hollywood, becoming a movie star. When I was little, first thing I remember, my mama spanked me. I said, when I become a movie star, I'm not going to buy you anything. And I don't even know where it came from because I never watched TV growing up. We grew up on a farm, so we was always out. I could sit and watch my aunts for hours watch TV. Because I was like, what? How can a person sit there and watch that thing so long? And I would watch them watching it. Never understood it, but I always said I wanted to be a movie star. Graduated in August. I got one of my checks. And I kept saying, man, this is not what I want to do. I should go to Hollywood right now. Never been out of this city. And I just took three deep breaths. And I went in and said, I quit. And the man behind the counter said, all right, well, we have a week and a whole check. And I said, just send it to my house. I go home. There's never no one at home because there were so many people in the house. I get home. There's nobody there. I make three bologna sandwich. I pack a little suitcase. I walk down to the bus station. I go up to that white man behind the counter. I said, can I go to Hollywood? I bought a ticket. I had $3 left to my name. Never even once, once thought of the seriousness of what I'd actually done. I thought, you know, I just meet somebody that's good saying, I just meet somebody and I'm gonna become an actor. That's all I said. So I ended up sitting, the guy, in the, I was just sitting in there and I swear to you, I didn't know what to think. I just looked outside this way, I was lost. This way, I was lost. That way, I was lost. This way, I was lost. The only place I knew was the bus station. So I would go back in there, sit in those little chairs. Back then, they had the little TVs on them. And the guy ended up kicking me out of there and I ended up sleeping behind the bus station. So I couldn't get a job, so I started delivering those annoying papers you see on your door guy from a truck. I'm from North Carolina. I was the only stupid one. They give you a whole stack. So you got this whole neighborhood. I pick you back up at 6 o'clock. They give you like $25. I delivered every one. <laughs> it wasn't until later when the guy goes, man, what are you doing? I come back all pale and blue from the sunstroke and no water. He <laughs> and they was like, man, you throw them away. And I was like, really? He goes, yeah, man, they don't check. Sometimes they check. I deliver every single one of those things. I got the yellow pages, I started sneaking in all the studios. I would go to Universal Studio tour, take the tour. When they get to this point, they tell everybody to get off. And then all the people are standing around there and say, you're getting ready to go into the sound stage. When you get inside, stay to the left. And are you are going to see all of this stuff? I'd be in the back, and I would just back up and drift off and go visit all the sets. And then at the end of the day, I would come get with whatever group was there and go on and finish the tour and go out. I would go to KTLA, KTTV, and buy a little lunch pail. And in the morning, just walk through the gate and just wave at the guy. Sometimes they'd be like checking the car and be like, and they just keep going. Sometimes they'd be like, hey, hey, come in. I get kicked out. And one time I'm on a bus and I see all these people. And I said, what's going on? And the guy said, it's a cattle call. So what does that mean? He said, it's a cattle call means they have an audition and anybody can audition. And I was like, really? So I jump off the bus. I jump in line. I take somebody's resume and I wipe their name out, put my name on it. And I get uh, in line for a Gino's restaurant commercial. I got the lead in the commercial. I went to that guy and said, I don't have an agent. He took me to his agency and said, well, uh, this guy got the commercial and he don't have an agent. So of course they signed me. I said, send me on five auditions. If I don't get three of them, you never have to see me again. They signed me, of course, because I had the job. They said, yeah, I like your guy in 80. In 87, um, in 87, uh, I got Tour of Duty, which was a, a, a CBS show, best show in history TV. It just came on DVD, go get it. Tour of Duty. Um, I got that show, it was on for three years on CBS, and it just took off from been going from there. Most fun I ever had? Life. Yeah. Yeah, why? Life, because it was Martin and Eddie and Bernie, it was just a whole, a guy Tory, uh, it was just, every day was like, you, you hurrying to get to school, you're hurrying to get somewhere. You know, you really, really can't wait to get to work because it's just fun all day. When you're on a set sometimes, it gets boring and you're ready to go. It's like on that set, we were always together in a group laughing and joking and cracking and playing and talking. And, and Eddie and Martin had the big, huge trailers, and it was so many of us. Gary, Bernie, me, the guy, Tori, uh, Anthony Anderson, Bear Telefair. There were so many of us that they said, well, we can't buy you all the trailers. So Martin and Eddie getting the big dang is you guys just getting single bang. Period. That's it. That's it. So it's okay, fine. So we had all ours together, together, and we called ours the ghetto, <laughs> and they had these lights on, and Eddie Martin would come over and hang out in the ghetto because you know, we were always over there laughing and joking, and it was just like a, like a summer camp. This TV show I'm about to uh, produce for BET is called Get It In, and it's kind of like a, 
uh, a mix of a mixture of Wild and Out and uh, Onions and Eating Light. It's an ad lib show where we take the group of comedians, and I'm gonna start a story. You have to pick this story up from where I leave it off. Take it anywhere you want it, make it as funny as you want, and just go for it. When the, your buzzer goes off, and the next comedian has to pick it up where you left off, and so forth and so on. And the stuff the comedians come off the top of their head is just hilarious. Sometimes you get them on the road, and it's just funny. And the audience is gonna create the The next guy get it, and then he flips it, and that makes it funny, and then goes the other way. And also, in that, you have to insert a secret phrase. Somewhere in your story, they have to try to guess it. I got a movie coming out. Well, I, I got a little party in um, Meet Dave with Eddie Murphy and Gabrielle Union coming out July 11th. I also have a movie uh, we just finished called uh, Haitian Night. Uh, myself and Kenya Moore, Miss America. Uh, also, uh, one called Grand Theft Auto. I play a bad guy, you know, lead of a car theft ring, all fine girls. It's a big ballers party, and I uh, steal the wrong guy's car. So basically, that's really hot, hot action. Cops shoot them up. And it's all that redemption. I see myself in my career going behind the camera because I did a TV show, Joey. I was on Matt LeBlanc's spinoff of Friends called Joey. All the Friends cast made like $70 million. And he goes, Kevin Bright, who's this really, really cool Italian producer. His back end participation, his first check for his percentage of owning the show as a producer was $469 million. I'm never going back in front of the camera. <laughs> I want to be on that side.